Well, hello everybody and good morning. It is Friday, the day after the qualifiers of World's Strongest Man. And today we have a fun day because we're heading over to Capital Books here in Sacramento and we are gonna do a little book signing event. Um, so Eric Rosswood, the other co-author, and Nadi Chinani, the illustrator, are actually in town for this event. So this is actually the first time we're meeting both of them, which is really exciting considering we've been working on this book for three years. Okay. And uh, it's gonna be a great time. I know a lot of the fans from Worlds are, are excited about it. We're hoping to see a lot of great kids uh, and just inspire as many people as possible with this book. The social team from World's Strongest Man is coming over with us. So it's gonna be a really fun event. Gonna have a great time just spreading a message of love and positivity and strength to the world. So we're gonna keep posting on how it all goes. So today we are here in Sacramento at Capital Books for my first uh, book signing event for the new, newly released Strong that just came out. into the mix to start you know drawing your words and, and drawing you that was when it really like obviously like by that point we'd been going through this process for a year and a half yeah. almost and um, you know obviously like we had the manuscript and we had things really kind of figured out but actually like seeing the illustrations is when it felt real you know like when everything was starting to come to life and obviously Nitty is just fabulous and being able to work with somebody with that kind of caliber but somebody who also was able to take liberties and really use her interpretation of the words while also keeping the essence of myself and Joey and Eric and his family <laughs> in the story uh, it was really special that we had so much input with her and she was so willing to work with us on, on so many aspects of the story I think the, the, the one thing that really struck me when Eric first approached me about the story was the thing that he said is like he didn't want this to be a coming out story. And I think that was really important to me because obviously, you know, coming out is a part of my story, but it's not my entire story. And and making my relationship with my husband um, not an obstacle, I think, you know, is really great. And that I think that is what sep separates this from other you know, from some of the other LGBTQ books where we always see like coming out as the focal point or the obstacle that somebody has to overcome. Whereas in this story, it was more of the catalyst to uh, to achieving greatness in my sport. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important too because we got a lot of pushback from that early on of wanting the coming out piece in there. And like Rob was saying, we didn't want that to be something that's the problem that people have to overcome because we want kids to see the story and see somebody open and thriving in life and being happy with who they are, not something like somebody that's struggling 
with who they are and having to come to terms with it. Yeah, I like how you said that the main point of the story is embracing your authentic self, and then that makes it whatever that happens to be. In your case, it was embracing that you could wear bright colors because you're gay and embrace all of that. And, but it could be something completely different for somebody else. Absolutely. How's the reaction to the book been? It's been out about two weeks now. What are what are you hearing on social media from people you talk to? It's been unbelievably positive. Uh, I, you know, it's so exciting, you know, that first week, uh, most of it was just spent on social media looking at the message requests and getting tagged in so many different pictures of, and just seeing that the story is affecting so many people, you know, like having friends that don't even have children yet buying the book and saying, you know, they're learning something from the story. It's, it's really great. And, you know, just see it in the hands of kids and families, it, uh, it really, it just makes me happy, you know? It really is just so great, and you know, even here we are three weeks after the book release, and it's still going really well. We've had uh, good responses from teachers, too, teachers and parents, which has been great. Um, I think the teachers is really positive, especially with all the things that are going on around the world, or around the country with the book banning, and don't say gay bill, and all that stuff. So to hear like parents and teachers hearing it and saying, you know what, this is, it's a great message. It's done in a way that's relatable. Um, we're definitely going to share it. And I, I think people telling us that they're going to share it with others is one of the best compliments you can get. Strongman obviously is happening right now in Sacramento. When do we start to get the events of lifting so many stuffed unicorns and so many slices of cake? Are you talking about that? I mean, we have that? some of the world's team here now. We might have to pitch it to them. I mean, I'm um, happy them. I, mean, <laughs> I think I think all strong men would be happy with a cake lift. I don't think that would be too terrible. Well, as I recall, the cake and the unicorns are acquainting to I think pianos or something in the book. Yeah. So it won't be. I mean, a piano for you guys though wouldn't be too bad. I That's guess. just a casual Tuesday. I mean, <laughs> you know, and this weekend, you know, just the other day, I got to walk with a car on my back. Yeah. So how much cake is that? I wonder. We should get the researchers to look into that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got this. I have to ask Rob, but I'll ask both of you, what are your favorite um, images that are in this book? So the one that really struck me was, um, it's about halfway through the book, and it's when um, when Joey and I first fall in love. This one. And the way it's depicted is, you know, it really is so casual that you know, there's two men in this masculine space of a weight room, and they fall in love with each other, right? And I think to, you know, obviously it's, it's very true to our story because that you know we've we've seen our love blossom throughout the sport of strong men and throughout my career and you know to have it depicted that way that these two men found love in this hyper masculine arena of a gym and you know it was really it was really powerful to me because you know growing up as a gay kid and um, and you know, my husband as well you know the weight room can be extremely intimidating for for gay men. And to be able to show that moment, I think it's, it's a little bit deeper than some might realize. It's not just two men falling in love, but just the fact that they found love in this space that can sometimes be so terrifying for gay men, I think is really, really powerful. Mm -hmm. And it's adorable. It, it, <laughs> how did you feel being uh, drawn, Joey? I'll just put you on the spot. That kind of put me like, or made it like more real to me seeing it, like, like he was saying earlier, like seeing the pictures and seeing the whole story out loud and... Just, I'm grateful to even just like kind of be a part of the story and see myself in it. Thanks. <laughs> and for you, Eric, what's your favorite? Um, I have a couple. Um, the first one I would say is the fire truck one. To me, that I think is a real powerful uh, spread for kids because we're going through all the different things they can lift. And I think having a two page spread of this fire truck just coming across, I think, is a wow moment. Um, so that's special for me. Also, Nitty asked if she could draw our family in there, so we're a little Easter egg in that uh, nice scene. <laughs> and I think that's also, to me, we, this book I think talks about breaking stereotypes. It doesn't say we're breaking stereotypes, but it talks about different things that we're doing that are against the norm. And I think that page is really powerful to me because it shows Rob being a football player at one spot and also a cheerleader. And I just think from going to one space to the other and then going into strongman i it's just it kind of makes a paradigm shift of what strong means and what what strong people do and what's not strong and it, 
I think it just kind of bundles it all up together and you can pretty much do anything. Mm -hmm. yeah, I really like the, the football and the cheerleader because I think that's going to give so many people like, hmm, you could do both. Yeah. Uh, which is not a message I think that's out there as much as it should be. Now, Rob, you mentor young people through your work. You're a, a middle school and high school um, athletic, um, athletic trainer. You're also a pro, a pro ambassador with Athlete Ally. Yes. This book seems like an extension to that work just for a, I say a younger audience, I think though anybody could read this book and you know feel good and get positive after it. Yeah, it's been it's been really cool to be able to share this, you know, with my students and um, and you know to be able to it, it was it was really exciting. I think the cool moment for me was um, one of the uh, ESL teachers in the elementary school that is adjacent to where I work. She bought a copy, and you know, I got an email from her late that evening, and she was like, "I'm sitting here in my living room crying as I'm reading through the story. So proud that I know you." Uh, and I also just ordered another 15 copies for our elementary school to have. Um, so it was really powerful, you know, and to be honest, you know, I work in a place that leans a certain way politically, and to be able to have this story in that type of area uh, is really powerful, and I think it's also great because working with students firsthand, um, it gives me some excitement and some hope for, for that younger generation because, you know, there are, you know, we have LGBTQ students that are open and just living life as themselves every single day. And overwhelmingly, they don't, they're not met with any negativity. You know, having a, a trans boy as a junior in high school and he's always called by the proper pronouns, his, his preferred name, everything. Um, and kids don't even, think twice about it. So to be able to see that firsthand and be able to share my story with them you know, through this medium, uh, it's been really, really special and exciting. That's great. And I love that you do live in that conservative-leaning place, but you still have that kind of, you know, at least that island of, you know, everybody kind of getting along well. Yes. Um, and especially that the teenagers are thriving. Yeah. In this kind of era, you mentioned the book bannings and you mentioned Don't Say Gay. What do you tell to your students and even the parents that you're talking to to make sure that their queer kids are feeling safe and supported? Because even if they're safe where they are, they're hearing obviously all the chatter that's around them. It's it's a tough conversation, right? You know, because I think you know, especially as as younger queer folk, they feel like they're constantly being attacked. And I think, you know, through this story and the message that we're trying to continue to send is as long as you are living who you truly want to be, um, obstacles become inferior at that point. And, you know, I think as, as part of the LGBT community, we are obviously constantly under pressure and attack and, you know, kind of being looked at under a microscope. But... For me, um, you know, my pride and my happiness has always been more important than what other people think or say. And uh, that's really the message that I try to get across to people. Mm -hmm. Before we see if there's any Q&A, um, pride, pride Month begins in just a few days. Uh, and I'm curious, you know, as we sit here in 2022, what pride means to each of you? You know, to me, um, it's really been about you know, not hiding who I did hide for so long, right? I didn't come out until I was 22. And, you know, finally coming out and, you know, accepting myself for who I was and, and realizing what true happiness means and experiencing that for the first time, uh, it made me realize I never wanted to go back and be that person I was in the years prior. So for me, it's just constantly living um, in that happiness and you know, being proud of who I am and not hiding. You know, I always say like, I'm unapologetically gay everywhere I go. And, you know, for me, because it is like, I am so happy and proud of who I am and, and who I, you know, strive to be and always trying to just leave a positive message of, you know, love and acceptance everywhere I go. You know, the couple, two things I always say, you know, like always proud, never scared. And it's easier to love than hate, right? You know, those are the two messages that I always try to get across. And as long as I'm doing that, you know, I know I'm doing the right thing. Fantastic. With that, we'll see if there's any questions. I've got a question. 
Um, what is the best, because you said people are reaching out to you, what are the kind of comments they're saying, and like, what's the one that is uh, hit you the hardest about people that have gotten the book? I think in terms of the book, it's, it's really just been so, I think the best part is like seeing what Eric alluded to, right? Like having people say, you know, I wish there was somebody like you when I was growing up. You know, I think the best way I describe it is growing up, I never thought I was possible, right? Because we had never seen an openly gay strength athlete before. And to now be that person that people can look to to say, well, I can do that with my life. You know, this is possible for me. It might not be strong, man, it could be any professional sport, but, you know, being an openly gay athlete, you know, in athletics is difficult, right? Because a lot of the times people look at gay men and they automatically put you in a box. And it's because of how media typically portrays gay men, right? It's usually feminine, flamboyant, outgoing. Those are typically the characteristics of most gay men we see in media. And to see a, you know, muscle bound, dude with a mohawk, <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't fit the stereotype of what people think gay is. And changing that narrative has been really cool so people can see and realize, you know, oh, I can do this too. Just to, just to add my two cents to the whole thing, um, like, like you, I came out, the first person I came out to was myself when I was about 19, 20 years old. And I distinctly remember looking in the mirror and saying, I'm gay, I'm gay. And as I said it over and over, I started bawling because A, I was saying goodbye to a former self, but I was also convinced that I would be alone, that that, that was the end of any kind of romantic prospect for me. And that was a tough, at that time, you know, 99, 2000, you know, you didn't see a lot of representation. There's just, it just wasn't there. And so that's what I was convinced that my life was gonna be what it was. And um, fortunately, I am married. Uh, we've been together 20 years. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> but I'm very, it's just so crazy to see the evolution of, of representation and why I appreciate and always express my gratitude to those folks who are out, who are, who do, um, who are present, who are visible, because it was so important to me as a grown man, like as a grown person, because I've been following Strongman for like 10 plus years, and every time I try to talk to my friends about it, they're like, okay, that's fine, whatever, it's weird. But they also <laughs> always ask, it is weird. They, all, they also always ask, is there a gay one? And I could not never say yes before. And it's, I bring that up because even as grown men, we were looking for representation. We were looking for um, validation. And now, you know, thanks to you, we have that. And I appreciate that so much. And now to see it in, in print for little ones, like, that's just amazing to me. Like I said, 20 years ago, I was a grown person thinking that there was nobody out there. And now there's nine, 10 year olds who can be like, you know, I can identify with that and so that. I don't know if I have a question per se, but it's just the absolute gratitude that I have. Mm -hmm. I cannot express enough. Um, you, and I'm glad you're here because I wanted to express my thanks to you because my husband's uh, disabled and I'm the caregiver in his life. And while I definitely would not call Rob disabled, um, he, does sometimes require special handling and special... Not sometimes, all the time. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> and so I know that this does not happen by itself. And so I want to express my gratitude to you for being, you know, his strength, you know, his physical strength, his moral strength, his emotional strength when he needed it. Because, you know, I, I'm sure you would agree with there have been times where he probably wouldn't have been able to get through all this. I express my gratitude to you as well. I appreciate um, that. This may have already been covered, but I guess my, the question I should use to verify this long speech is what made you or what inspired you to do a, a little one's book as opposed to uh, a big kid's book, so to speak? I'll let you go on that. <laughs> um, for me, I don't think that there's enough representation in picture books. 
especially real life. Um, it's slowly starting to change. It still has a long way to go. Um, recently, there's been a, a big wave of uh, picture book biographies uh, over the last couple of years, and um, not really LGBTQ people. Uh, I think there's one with one or a couple about Harvey Milk, which is great, he's a very important person, but there's more than Harvey Milk, um, and Harvey Milk always seems to be the focus. That's, that's the other thing I appreciate, that it would be easy for uh, Rob to show up and be like, hi, I'm gay, pay attention to me. Like, but it's not, I told my friends, you're not just gay, like you, you're actually good at what you do, you know? <laughs> you're, you're breaking records, and so that's, I. I love that, that you can say, hey, I'm gay, and I'll kick your ass. Like, <laughs> and so it's, 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 it's nice to see that there are uh, multiple layers to people. Like, yes, I'm gay, but I'm also this, and I'm also this, and I'm this. Going. <laughs>